she doesn't really she's not like I mean she's not against it but she's not really that for herself so mm-hmm. I'm just like glad that she's open to it good oh yeah, yeah. It's hard. it does make a difference anyways how are you good I started therapy this week so oh, yay okay good yeah. do yeah. you like your person I do um I've had problems in the past you might have come across this where like the therapist talks more than me and I'm like okay how are you supposed to learn anything that I need if you're telling me your stories. Like I, I love getting to know who I'm talking to. Right. So if you have relatable shit, like cool. But like I've had therapists where like, maybe I talked for 10, 15 minutes of the hour. Yeah. And it's like, mm -mm. so she was very like 10 word sentence for a question set up and then talk, 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 talk. And then, you know, so she was listening. She helped me realize some things that I'm like, okay, that's fair. So we're going to work on it. Yeah. I know. I Yeah. I mean, I haven't really had like too much exper- like experience with that, but there have been like where it's almost, yeah, they're trying to relate to me with their own, but like with their own stories, but it's not really working as far as like me learning anything about myself. So right. yeah, that's a tricky balance. Yeah. Or even trying to like understand where something's coming from, right? Like She was like, oh, okay, so let's go back to this time. What was happening? What happened to you? I'm like, okay, so you're actually trying to get to the bottom of what the fuck is going on. Right, right. And why I feel this way. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, it's really interesting. My mm -hmm. therapist had me do um, a – a lifeline or not a lifeline like a um a timeline of my life and like the oh, stuff wow. the positive stuff is on the top and the negative stuff is on the bottom and i've never really i don't think i've done that um and honestly everything before 18 apart from like my parents divorce i was just like i don't really care and i didn't really think of anything cuz honestly i was just like my i feel like my life started if i'm being honest when i went to berkeley yeah wow like, because, like my brain, you're starting like, your own yeah self kind of away from I your guess. family and like i just think that adulthood like no, i don't know i just can't really think of anything like so amazing that i like think is worth mentioning before 18 mm. apart from the divorce and even then i'm just like okay whatever it happened you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> yeah like that was the last session she asked about the divorce because i had put that on my timeline or whatever and i she was like so how do you feel talking about this after the session and i was like honestly i feel so over it i don't want to talk about it anymore i don't want to talk about relationship with my dad anymore i'm like really over it but at the same mm. time i know that i need to if we're going to like move forward in what else i'm struggling with kind of thing yeah so but sometimes but, it's okay to say, like, right now I'm done. Yeah. Like, give me a couple months to sit in this and stop talking about it and we'll come back to it. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's okay. Well, and she pointed out, and yours might do this too, hopefully, but it's really interesting because she pointed out, like, she was asking me about the feeling, like, you know, the feelings wheel. Have you seen that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. She was like, point to, like, just tell me some feelings words that were going on during X time, whatever. And um, I started kind of explaining and she and it was just really interesting because she was like, well, right now you're like intellectualizing it. You're like kind of explaining the reasoning behind it and how you've processed it. But I'm asking you to say like a feelings word that was happening during that time. And I was like, Mm. oh, there's a difference. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I feel like we both kind of function in that realm. And we also like I got called out for saying. I know this isn't logical. She's like, okay, but like, it's okay that it's not (laughs) like, yeah, like, but I think we both kind of think in that, that headspace. I did too, for sure. Cause we just try to make sense of it, but also like, especially for things that are like from the past, we're like, okay, but like, I understand why it happened now. Let's move Mm -hmm. forward. And so when you're asked about like just raw feelings in that moment, you're like, okay, I haven't. I guess I have to put thought into that. And also like, mm-hmm. I don't want to care about that anymore. You know what I mean? No, yeah. Yeah. When I look at you and I, I feel like a lot of times we're the uh, be okay for everybody else people. Yeah. And that's, I think that's something she, she pointed out is like, it's okay to not think about what other people are experiencing in that moment. So you mm-hmm. can experience it. Like, yeah. I mean, I've definitely okay. gotten better at that. I don't really do that anymore. I feel that's um, good. But that's definitely something to, think about yeah that's definitely my problem 
Yeah. Well, that was a nice little moment. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Therapy. Yeah. The that was like a lightning round therapy. <laughs> I know. Uh, well, I'm glad that we're all doing therapy now. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm very interested to see like what my mom thinks of this. And I told her I was like, if you hate it, or if you decide like you don't want to do this anymore, like I will say you should try to do at least two because the first one's probably just going to be like intake. Yeah, just ex- like explaining what exactly happened and stuff. Um, but sometimes, I mean, I will say sometimes the first one, like that's what I, that's why I knew that I wanted to stick with this therapist that I'd found because this, that first one was when she did ask me to do the timeline because most of the time mm-hmm. when with a first, yeah, it is just intake and it's just like, okay, tell me why you're here. Blah, blah, blah. And then you're just like, did I just pay $60 or whatever the fuck my copay is or more like just to explain myself of why I'm here like you know kind of like the basics of why I'm here and it's just like or like you know talking about your insurance and your credit card and how often you want to come and all these things and I'm just like can we talk about what I'm actually here for so when she talked about that um and kind of went dived right in I was like oh okay dove right in whatever I was like okay I like this yeah I can get on board with this yeah that's good Okay. Well, anyways, let me <laughs> let me go. This ahead. is a this is a nice segue because we do have a very big therapy uh centralized Chris in this episode. So That's true. That's very true. I know. I didn't even think of of airing this, but I can. <laughs> we don't have to. I'm just I'm just like It's a nice moment. We're in it. Yeah, it's a nice little moment. Yeah. I like it. I think I think we need this. I think I I definitely need more uh friend connection yeah and I've I did mention that we didn't get into it with the therapist but I just like I think I've just disconnected on accident from so many people Mm -hmm. not because I don't love them or not because I don't want to be talking to them or anything but I'm so tired yeah (laughs) I know and it's a lot of effort to maintain yeah yeah. Oh, especially when like the most important, some of the most important people in my life don't live here. Right. Like most of my people are out of state. Some yeah. of them are out of country and it just makes it harder and um, it just takes more effort, which I'm willing to put in. It's just, I didn't realize until a certain point in the last like month or two where I'm like, I have not been trying hard enough. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, because it does. I mean, it does take effort to maintain friendships or to start friendships or whatever mm-hmm. it is. But I think something is like biting it off in chunks, though. It's like you don't have to have like 20 friends immediately or even 10, just like start right. with, starting with one and trying mm-hmm. to like, you know, strengthen that one and then move forward from there is always helpful. And that's something yeah. that I've been learning a lot this year. Like, I have really realized too that, like, I don't know, I feel like I always said that I had social, not always, but I kind of thought for the last couple of years that I had social anxiety because I was always just Mm -hmm. like, oh, kind of dreading going to parties. And then I thought about it and I was like, I really only have that when there's more than eight people, when there are people that I don't know if I'm going to know there or not, Mm -hmm. or, and this is the part that I think was hardest for me is when I have known these people, but I'm not necessarily comfortable with them being myself or like whatever. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I might have to be on and Mm -hmm. trying to connect in a way that maybe isn't as natural. And like some people have to do that anyways for like your work or whatever. But then I, when I started like hanging out with people that I don't feel that like flutter of like, Oh God, I have to like put it on, put your face on. Um, it really diminished the amount of close friendships I thought I had. And I think that is something to reckon with because Mm -hmm. which, and by reckon with, I mean, I'm good now, now that I've understood like the people that I do hang out with, it's usually one or two people at a time four maximum, maybe five. (laughs) (laughs) And they're people that I just don't feel, I don't have social anxiety when I go hang out with like two of my close friends that I'm thinking of right now. Like, Uh, I just, you know, I can be myself and I know that we're going to have a good time regardless. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, maybe it's not social anxiety. Maybe it's just like the anxiety of knowing that I don't feel as comfortable around them, Mm -hmm. which you and me, maybe, I don't know. Well, maybe you don't feel this way, but I feel guilty. I felt guilty that I felt that way. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, 100%. 
Yeah, I feel I, I definitely. I was like, I should get along with everybody. I should just feel fine around everybody. Like everyone's great. And that's just like, they are great, but maybe they're not for me all the time. Yeah. yeah and I think, I think we all are going to have those relationships in our life where we have to put on, we're putting on our like show face instead yeah. because we're not at that comfort level with, with that person yet. And, or we might not, not ever be, and that's okay, but we don't have to be spending our quality yeah. set aside for set aside for self-care friend time with those people because you're not self-caring if you're putting that face on. Yeah. Yeah. But and that I think is something as you get older you're like what am I spending my energy on? Mhm. Oh my gosh. Yeah, even just bringing Killy into my life is it's really it's prioritized how I spend my free time. Like yeah. stuff I used to do like I'm now like yeah that does not that's not important to me. You yeah. know? Like totally. it, other stuff takes precedence. And I think, yeah, like you're saying, as you get older, the more tired you get. Yeah. The more- well, and the other thing I think people have to understand is that sometimes it can get lonely because mm-hmm. when you decide, like, I want to spend my energy on the people that matter to me, like it does, it does start to take down that amount of people that you feel more comfortable with. So you do mm-hmm. have to kind of understand that you might not have as many people around you at all times but if you think about it you were I was anxious around a lot of those people anyways so like what was it really regardless yeah um so that's really interesting and then some people I think are I talk to people and maybe this is an introvert thing I think this is where I get confused on if I'm an introvert because they say Mm -hmm. introverts are like more just more interested in having like really deep conversations getting to that deep Mm -hmm. conversation way quicker than extroverts because extroverts are like so comfortable with so uh surface level conversation right. and uh which uh, again some people are just so fine with that and i just find it draining yeah oh yeah i'm completely drained being around people and i'm like good <laughs> at it i think in a way like i ask mm-hmm. questions i relate to people but at the end i'm like oh god that was a lot i think a lot of people who would meet you holly like just randomly like in a coffee shop or in an improv class they would automatically think you're an extrovert yeah. And I think once people get to know you, it's this is what so it's really cool at work. We do a couple of these things like we just did a Myers Briggs and we go into how does that help the team work together that we all have different personality traits. It's really mm-hmm. cool. So one of the tra- things that the trainer said was just because you're labeled as an introvert doesn't mean you can't be an extrovert. Right. It right. just means that's not where you're comfortable living. Right. And I think that's that like explains you perfectly. And I think me to a degree, I'm definitely, I definitely don't do the extrovert as well as you do. You do such a good job of engaging people and everything. But I think you are an introvert who, who is very functional as an extrovert. It's just not where you're comfortable living. Yeah. Thank you. I read this book called, um, quiet, the power Mm -hmm. of introversion or something like, I can't remember the, it's called quiet, but you should check it out. I mean, for me, it was like kind of weird because, or, I don't know. I I felt like since I had kind of worked through a lot of that, I already knew a lot of what was going on um, with myself or whatever. But um, yeah, I really think everybody, like you said, has both qualities or can have both Mm -hmm. qualities. And yeah, I mean, with the whole work from home thing, I like I said, I already I had like a whole identity crisis. I was like, am I really extroverted? Because I hate being by myself the entire time. But I just wonder, there are people I think that are cool being by themselves the entire time, but at the same time you need, you do need connection whether Mm -hmm. you want it or not. So I don't know. I really feel like I fall right in the middle with that. And there is that term um, called ambivert or whatever the hell, which like, I don't know if that's been studied or who cares about that, but um, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like I have both. Yeah. Which is fair. You could lie right in the middle. It'd be interesting to take the test. I know. I know. I don't know what the, wait, what test? The Myers-Briggs test. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I should, I feel like I've t- I took that like a million years ago. Yeah. I definitely took it in like high school, mm-hmm. but it was really interesting to take again, like as an adult. Yeah. I did the um, Enneagram. Ooh, and what's that? It's like you're assigned a number given your person, it's another personality test. Um, and I think it's like, you have different sides of you and then also it's how you relate to other people. And I took it a while ago and I got one number and then I took it more recently and I got another number and that next number seemed a little bit more in tune with what I thought about myself. And maybe that's because I was older. So yeah, you're right. It probably would help to take it as like a self-actualized adult maybe. 
Yeah. I think, I think it also shifts. Like you're not a, necessarily a different person, but I think it can shift with your, your life experiences too. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, cool. Well, <laughs> I love that we had our little moment. I know that was a nice moment. I loved it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> okay. Well, are you ready for Parks? <laughs> I <laughs> I am so ready for Parks. I'm glad that you recorded this in case you want to use it. We don't have to. Like, this is just a nice time for us too. Yeah. Um, but I did not start GarageBand until this moment. Just so you okay. know. Okay. Yeah. No, I didn't want to start it in the middle.